right, it's time to talk about two-handed grip. Now, I'm gonna show you kind of the grip that I prefer to teach beginners with. And then once you get a little time under your belt and you're used to controlling the gun and whatnot, I'm gonna show you the grip that you'll probably transition to, all right? First one is the revolver grip, or what I call fist on top of fist. It's a great beginner grip, and it works on almost every handgun out there. Grab the pistol, you're gonna tuck your thumb down, and now I'm essentially gonna take this hand and make a fist on top of this hand. So I wrap it around like that, and this is what I call fist on top of fist, right here. It works like a champ. Well, the only thing you really gotta be careful of is hitting the magazine release. So if you have long fingers or long thumbs, I should say, you can accidentally, inadvertently hit the magazine release and drop the magazine out of the gun during recoil. So you gotta be careful of that. But once again, fist on top of fist, just like that. Great beginner grip. Now, why don't people use this all the time? I'll tell you why. Because you're low on the gun and it accentuates muzzle flip, all right? But I'll tell you, this is a grip that everybody needs to have in their bag of tricks because this is the grip when you're, you use when you're shooting a revolver. The next grip I'm gonna show you is a great grip, but it came from the competition world. It started on 1911s, all right? And it is not a grip you wanna use with a, with a, a revolver or a Browning high power, which you don't hardly see people shooting Browning high powers at all anymore, but I'll talk about why it's a problem. So once again, this is a great beginner grip, revolver grip, or what I call fist on top of fist. Grab it, make a fist on top of it, and then there is your grip, great beginner grip right there. Okay, now, next grip that a lot of people morph to once they get some time down rage is a so-called high grip or thumbs forward grip. And like I said, this started from the competition world. So you grab the gun like this, and now I wanna fill as much of this surface as possible. So I do this, and then now my thumb is kinda of pointing down range. So, and then what this does is, it kind of takes that support hand and you kind of force that thumb down range and you kind of lock that wrist down range, which helps with muzzle flip. It helps control muzzle flip. So once again, I'm here and I want to get here. And then this ends up becoming my so-called high grip or thumbs forward grip. Now, a couple things about it. It really requires you to clamshell your support hand. The support hand is not locked on the gun as efficiently as it is with the beginner or fist on top of fist grip. When you go to the thumb forward or so-called high grip, all right, this hand's only being held on by clamshell pressure. And if you just kind of lay it on there, you'll see you'll be doing this all the time. All right, so you got a really clamshell from here to here with your fingers through your palm. You got to really clamshell it. All right, big time. Now, the other thing that get people in, gets people in trouble with this grip is they tuck their thumbs in too tight to the gun. And as a matter of fact, there's some teacher, you know, instructors that teach that. Remember, it came from the 1911 world, so people are used to riding their thumb on top of thumb safety. The problem is if you take that approach with almost any other handgun, SIG, Beretta, Glock, HK, Walther, you're going to interfere with the slide stop. And now what's going to end up happening with your thumbs there, the gun isn't going to lock to the rear on an empty mag. Or in some cases, you'll accidentally bump the slide stop up and lock the slide to the rear while you're firing. So what I teach here, guys, is real simple. If it's a 1911, I put my thumb on top of the thumb safety. All the other guns out there, without fail, I bring my finger out like this, and I create that pocket right here. So the slide stop can work without interference. All right, you don't ride it in tight like on top of the thumb safety of a 1911. That's what I do on a 1911 and most shooters using this grip do the same thing. But with every other gun on the planet, you wanna bring your thumb out here, lock it down, and then that creates a window or a pocket for the slide stop to work without interference. So once again, to review, since there's a lot in this video here, in this little segment, beginner grip, revolver grip, fist on top of fist, like that. All right, once you get to a certain point, and like I said, you need that grip in your bag of tricks because if you're shooting a, wall, a uh, revolver or you're shooting a gun like a Browning High Power, the next grip is gonna be a problem. All right, now the high grip or so-called thumb forward grip, like this, right here, 
okay? Why is this a problem with a revolver? Well, you can get, remember when the revolver comes around, those cylinders are not always exactly perfectly aligned with the bore. There's almost no way they can be. So what you'll have is when the projectile leaves the cylinder, it has to do a little bit of that to get lined up with the bore. When it does that, it oftentimes kick off, kicks off part of the barrel jacket or the lead or whatnot, and it can be rather uncomfortable on your thumb. So this is not a good grip for when you're shooting a revolver. That's why you see people do this to keep well away from the cylinder. Also with a Browning High Power, the slide stop extends to the rear, but it also extends to the front. And then when you do this grip with a Browning High Power, you'll hit the front of the slide stop and lock the slide to the rear while you're firing. So this grip, the so-called revolver grip on fist on top of fist, is what you want when you're shooting. If you're a beginning shooter, that's the one you want to start with, also shooting a revolver or Browning High Power. Hope you learned something out of this. I would recommend reviewing this section over and over till you get it dialed in. All right, have a good one. See you later.